The World Health acclaimed author and social activist doing an exclusive interview with Plus TV Africa, Professor Walosho Nka, when he was reacting to the open letter written by former military governor of Kaduna State, Colonel Abubakar Dangiwa Umar, accusing President Mahmoud Buhari of engaging in lopsided appointment in NNPC. According to him, the president has not been in charge of affairs in the last one and a half years. Well, I've said this before. I used the expression Rip Van Winkle, you know, when I made this statement. I don't believe that there's really anybody in charge in Asurok. I'm sorry to say this, but I've been studying the trend over the past year and a half. And I believe very much that this president is not in charge of this nation. There's so many aspects, so many directions. I'm convinced that he's not really totally with it. Because as a responsible leader and the minister, the minister of the indicted petroleum, there should even have been an address to the nation on this. It should have formed the subject yes. of an address to the nation. For me, it is so serious. It's not the, it's, it's not the fact alone, but if we know the history of this, and then we know what it has cost the nation, and we know that it isn't over yet. And then you say you're launching a, an inquiry. No, no, that's not. And joining me live in the studio is Libero Soshoma, a legal practitioner, to discuss more around some of the issues uh, Professor Wale Shunka raised on earlier on our 101 program. Thank you, Liberos, for joining us on the show this afternoon. My pleasure. Now, did anything the professor say, did, did it take you by surprise? Mm, not at all. Okay. Um, for, except... Um, um, for those that have not been following events in Nigeria, so that's when you'll be surprised. Um, what um, Prof is basically saying is re-echoing, you know, the reality on ground. And um, um, I had um, at some point described, um, you know, this um, also. Uh, from what we can see, it's almost as if everybody in the government, you know, they know that the president is uh, um, not in charge, unaware. Uh, permit me to use that word. And, and so everybody seems to be holding on to their own enclave. And then, you know, um, uh, using the president's name, you know, to hold on to that enclave. Let me give you instances. Look at what is happening in, in um, NDDC. One would have expected that uh, Mr. President would take decisive action. Uh, but the minister keep you know, banding the president's name, the president said this, the president did that. Look at, um, you know, political landscape also. In most cases, you find out the president is unaware. Look at recently, um, the death of uh, his former chief of staff, Abakiari, and then when a new one was appointed, and then we heard in the news that the president was reviewing about 150, you know, um, appointments, appointments and decisions. Abakiri made by Abba Kari that he was not aware of, that he didn't authorize. And that is his chief of staff, 150. We're not talking about one or five, 150 decisions. Yeah, and, well, and, and well, then, well, maybe we'll argue the fact that um, Abba Kari, well, the, the, one, of the, one of the duties, one of the core duties of the COS is overseeing the, the political appointments of Mr. President. And yeah, so, I mean, it, he's, does, does it come up surprising that, um, Mr. President now is saying he wasn't aware of those appointments, or was it just an oversight on the side of Mr. President? It can be an oversight because um, the chief of um, staff to the president is the head of the administration in the presidency. Yes. And then um, for Abakari was almost a de facto president. Mm -hmm. You know, you find out that a lot, during Abakari's time, a lot of things were said and done. Even Mr. President came out publicly to tell his ministers anything you want to see me for, see Abakari. Yes. And, and so he was almost as if he donated his powers to Abakari. Abakari became the de facto minister, uh, president. president. So at that point, with that kind of um, statement, Abakari could take decisions even without referencing the president. And, and so that's what, after the death, and it didn't take the president to be aware. It took an appointment of a new chief of staff for all of these issues to come to the fore. Okay. Uh, and, and so, I, I can cite many, even I like, talked about the political landscape. If you remember, in the, in, during the 2019 election, we saw how cam the campaign trail went. You can say he was fatigued, but the situation where Mr. President will raise the hand of a senatorial candidate as that of the governor. 
And then in some cases, he was not even aware that some governors visited him, you know, to, to show their nomination forms. So when you put all of this together and the fact that sometimes the government sing discordant to you, look at recent fight between Abike Dabri, special advisor to the president on diaspora, and the minister for, was it minister for foreign affairs now? Uh, and, and so you begin to wonder if the president truly knows what is happening around him. That was why, what, when I listened to the prof's uh, interview, what yes. came to mind was, you know, Babache Lawa's uh, statement, who is the presidency? And, and so that's basically what came to mind. And that was why Babache Lawa could ask that question at that time. Who is the presidency? Is the presidency? Now, another issue that was, that was um, talked about extensively by Prof was the recent statement credited to, uh, well, the open letter that was sent by uh, Abubakar uh, Abu Dangiwa Umrah, a former yeah. military governor of Kaduna State, yeah. and talking about the lopsided appointment of the president. How do you react to that, knowing that this was coming from a, a former military governor from the north? Um, you, you know, first and foremost, Dangiwa is somebody who has um, always stood for what is just and right. And that was what even led to his early years yes. from the military. And, and so, to that extent, he's, uh, he is not a Nigerian, you would say, because he's from the north, he would keep quiet, you know, and allow justice to pervade the land. That said, he simply re-echoed what every man on the street had been saying. Recently, I read um, an article somewhere where somebody described the NMPC as um, a Northern Nigerian Petroleum Company, Corporation. You know, because if you look at all, almost all the first 50 appointments there, yeah. they are all, you know, not and about from a few from the south, so about three. And then, Dangiwa referred specifically to the issue of Onoge and the issue of um, the uh, uh, PJ of the Court of Appeal. And as we speak now, the PJ acting presiding ju judge. judge of the Court of Appeal because she's a northern minority, a confirmation of her appointment is still pending. So all of these are issues that people know. And I, ha I had had cause to also say that, um, with all due respect to Mr. President, he's always had, you know, from day one, had behaved clannishly. And then he's somebody also who, um, un un unapologetically, you know, had shown that he does not have friends you know, across the divide, even despite having been in the military, having worked even in the southern part of Nigeria, but yet he does not have friends from the southern part. And so all his friends and the only people he trusts must come from the north. And also, if you marry that with the fact that being unaware of events happening around him, so people, they now talk about Mr. President's body language. So since you already know Mr. President's body language, everybody that is um, working in, in, in the presidency or people who are in his party would tow Mr. President's body language. And that's why some persons will come and tell you, we are in charge now, and, and so whether you like it or not. We can't continue, we can't build a country like that. Yeah. Where the, the, the fact that we have, um, what do you call it, um, um, a quota system, is to give every area a sense of belonging. But when you look at the country and you seem to have um, all the top appointments are from one particular area, yes. and then when, they, when you are asked, you say, oh, during um, um, what you call it, Jonathan's time, you know, majority of them from where, were from the East, but you actually came to correct Jonathan's mistakes, and then you are even repeating it, and you've, you, you've worsened it. Okay. Quickly, yeah. quickly also. Yes. If you, during um, Obasanjo's presidency, you must have at least one person from the region, from each region, that you can reach to if you, you don't have issues. Talking about you know, the, the president. character, yeah. But yes. in this government, the only Igbo man in the presidency is a, is a photographer. Now, let's, let's come to the issue of the AFDB um, renewal of tenor of uh, Kimume addition. Yeah. That, that generated a whole lot of controversy. Yes. And the prof also had an interesting perspective to it. I, I need to take on that quickly. Yeah, you, you see, um, that's where, you know, people like Obasanjo, you know, no matter uh, his um, flaws, you know, African, Nigerians, and the world will always respect him. You know, despite his age, he's somebody who would rise to the occasion at every given time. 
what the letter that Obasanjo wrote to African leaders, I had expected that letter to emanate from the president. From the president. But it didn't because, obviously, the president is not aware of what ha what's happening. And because what you see play out, it's um, a situation where the world powers would want to consistently, you know, neocolonize Africa, undermine Africa. If you read um, Shagari's book, talk about this same, how when the, with the formation of the African Development Bank, it was strictly for Africa and by Africans. But at some point, for lack of finance, they had to admit new shareholders. A situation where the bank had followed procedures um, uh, internally, and then you have the Board of Governors, and the powers of the Board of Governors are duly spelt out you know, in the memorandum of the bank. And then the Board of Governors constituted a panel to look into a matter headed by an executive director. And the matter, and at the end of the day, the reports you know, came up to say the allegations were not proven and that um, um, a lot of them were frivolous. And then you have a minority shareholder insisting and detecting that it must be the way they want it. Simply because once you have issues that have to do with development of Africa, because the world is scared, oh, look, Africa has the population, they have the market. The moment they leapfrog from their present position, and then there'll be a crisis. Right, and, finally, and so finally. quickly, yeah. if you put all of this together, that's why now with Obasanjo's letter, it, it was time, timely, and also it helped to you know, speak to Africa and that truly um, Africans should rally around um, uh, Akimumi. And, and that should be the way to All right, In just 30 seconds, if you can, and if you will, in, in the five years of the administration of President Mahmoud Wari, would you say they've delivered on expectations and the promised change to Nigeria in this five years? Well, I describe um, Buhari's administration as um, over-promising and under-delivering. Under, under um, there are so many, so many areas to point to. And, and then the, this, this is an administration that had been, you know, that be so loud with propaganda. You, you, you build a bridge and then you go to town with it. Meanwhile, you, you promise far more, more than the bridge. What happened to Lagos Calabar Railway that you know, they so make so much noise about since 2016? So all of this, is, for me, it's over-promising and under delivery. And um, I, I wish them well, and I wish Nigerians well. But for me, I can't, in all honesty, you know, bear another three years of this backwardness. Legal practitioner, liberal social media, it's been a pleasure having you join us on the news. My pleasure.